Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about branding, uh, specifically how to sell cold cows as uh, grass-fed beef and for more profit than just about anything else. So one of my favorite, like all-time favorite, um, you know, as a um, in my my advising businesses um, that I've done specific marketing and uh, startup uh, advising. Um, I, I've been in a lot of industries and I've worked with a lot of different companies all over the globe um, doing a lot of different things. And th- my favorite uh, branding or positioning uh, example that I've ever seen was a couple years ago uh, in just outside San Francisco. So it was in, in Northern California and it was beef. It was um, organic, not grass fed. So it was organic um ground beef and they were selling it at like these kind of neighborhood butcher shops and I think they even had a couple contracts with some local Whole Foods and other um, kind of big retail health stores and so they were selling 15 year old dairy cows um, ground beef for $11 a pound and they were calling it, it was aged on the hoof. (laughs) It's still, it's still like one of the greatest um, positioning marketing tactics I've ever come across. It's brilliant. And you might hate it. You might be furious that someone did this. But guess what? They're making millions a year selling 15-year-old dairy cows as organic ground beef and calling it aged on the hoof. And that money doesn't care about what you think. It doesn't care about how, you know, your righteous anger. Um, Yeah, they're killing it. And it's just amazing. So um, aged on the hoof. Uh, One thing that we did when we were first starting is, you know, the the herd that uh, my father-in-law, that came with the ranch that my in-laws purchased back in 2014, it, it wasn't very big, um, right around 30 head. And so, you know, we, we uh, knew that we needed to find cattle elsewhere. We needed to source our own beef from other ranches. And uh, what we did is we, we didn't really know anybody um, besides like the, the neighbors and the few people that I'd met at like the livestock auction, you know, and I had been to, heck, I'd been to the local forest service offices. I'd been to the USDF office in uh, Provo and the state office in um, Salt Lake. And I, I'd been all over um, talking to people, but we didn't know a lot of farmers, a lot of uh, beef producers. And so we had uh, an investor from one of my old businesses who I'm still good friends with, and he bought a ranch, and he had a big herd, and um, lived kind of in a rural area here in Utah, um, in in a place called Benjamin, and he knew a guy who had a dairy farm, and we said, "Ah, we're not looking for for dairy cows, Um, you know, black Angus, red red Angus, but we want want, uh, beef cattle. And he said, well, at least meet with this guy because he knows a lot of people. He's been around. He's like a fourth generation farmer and he might be able to help you out. And so we did. We met with the guy. His name was Tyler. And we met with Tyler and we told him what we needed. We needed to find, you know, source local beef. And we, at this point, we, we didn't know what we were doing. We had no idea, no idea what we were doing. We didn't know anything about the industry. We didn't know, you know, at that point, we didn't even know what was considered grass fed beef. We didn't know the difference between organic and grass fed. We didn't understand um, processing. We didn't understand, you know, state inspection, federal inspection. We just had no idea. We didn't even have a processor at that point. Um, But we met with Tyler and, you know, he said that he could find us beef. And he said, do you you care how old it is? And we said, no, you know, having no idea that it really mattered. Um, And so he proceeded to find us beef and he found us good good beef, but it was some of it. I mean, some were like six years, but others were were like 13 and 14 year old cows. And, uh, you know, at first we we just started doing uh, ground beef. And uh, so we were selling ground beef of these older cows. And we didn't understand aging, nothing. Uh, But it was, 
in hindsight, we can say, yes, it was grass-fed and it would qualify as grass-fed, although we weren't even marketing it as grass-fed at the point. I think we were just saying like natural or local. Um, anyways, um, and so, yeah, and, and then, you know, we actually, we ended up um, taking beef in and having later taking some of this older beef and aging it for, you know, 21 days and and using that with giveaways at first. And we did dozens and dozens of giveaways and we did all kinds of partnerships, partnering with gyms and bloggers where we would say, hey, you know, what we'll give you, you know, 10 pounds, we'll give you 10 pounds of grass-fed beef, you know, dry aged, um, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, we'll give you, a, it'll be a chuck roast and some ground beef and some steaks and maybe some chuck patties um, in exchange for you doing two posts about us to your 30,000 followers on Instagram and writing a blog post on your blog that we can then repurpose and put on our blog. And so we took this, you know, older beef that had been aged and we, I mean, we used it, man, I'm trying to think back, 1,500 pounds or so of it. And we, we never had anyone. No one knew. No one knew the difference. No one knew that this wasn't, you know, 30 month or 28 month or um, no one knew. It, it tasted amazing. So don't, uh, don't hesitate to innovate, I guess is my point. You know, you, God, there's a lot that you can get in trouble with. We didn't. Um, well, as far as we know, we, we didn't do anything wrong. And I'm still actually not sure. Laws are so weird. Uh, I don't even know if we did anything wrong now, but 